Okay, we're back to finish our Knights in Shining Armor book. <laughs> and you might have noticed, I decided to wear a crown today. Because I was thinking of our last page that we read about the tournament that knights have. And I was like thinking about the king. This book made me want to learn even more about what it was like to be a king and a queen back in this time. The Middle Ages. Okay, let's keep going. Let's think about our knights that we're reading about. Let's think about if we have any keywords we're finding. And let's think about if we have any questions that will help us understand even more and become experts on knights. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, look at this picture. Most knights followed a code of good behavior. These good knights believed they should be generous to the poor, protect their faith and the church, and defend those who couldn't defend themselves. These rules were called the Code of Chivalry. Wow. I wonder if all the knights did this, if they were all chivalrous. I'm wondering. Knights followed similar rules of chivalry during battle, too. When one knight took another knight captive, he would treat him as an honored guest. Whoa, that's not what I expected. And a chivalrous knight would never attack without warning. Such behavior was considered unworthy of a true knight. Wow. Oh, look what I noticed in this picture, too. How their helmet comes up. Oh, look at this page. Okay, if I'm going back and I'm thinking, oh, these pages were both about how knights are chivalrous in their regular life and in battle. What is this page all about? Look, it looks like this person maybe gave the woman over here a flower. Oh my gosh, could they be in love? Huh, let's read. Ladies had their own ideas of how a noble knight should act. They believed a chivalrous knight honored women, especially the one he loved and had sworn his devotion to. A knight would remain loyal to his lady and perform great deeds in her name. Oh, perform great deeds in her name. They like do something cool and they'll be like, in the name of whoever their wife was. But not all knights follow the code of chivalry. Oh, that's the question I had. What happens if they don't follow the code of chivalry? What will happen to them? Some did just the opposite. They robbed and plundered for their own gain. A knight who was proved guilty of bad behavior or cowardice was disgraced by having his sword and spurs broken. Without his weapons and the means to control his horse, he was no longer a knight. Oh, spurs. Those are the things that were on the knight's ankles. Interesting. Okay. Oh, look at this page. Oh, I just made the crown go on the page. This looks a little different than the other pages. I'm noticing the people in this page. They look like they're regular people with like modern day clothes. Like that looks like a suit and like a regular dress and shoes. Okay, let's see what this is all about. Oh, look, it is about today. Today, knighthood doesn't have the same meaning it did during the Middle Ages. Modern knights are also honored when they have done great deeds that benefit others. But their lives are not necessarily based on warfare. Many scientists, artists, writers, military figures, and explorers have been given knighthood. Men add the title sir before their names, just as they did in the Middle Ages. 
Oh, and women? We were wondering about this, if any women were ever knights. It looks like today they are, or they can be honored as knights. Women honored in this way are given the title dame. Interesting. Are you having any questions right now? Think about it. Throughout history, tales and songs have been written and sung of famous knights and the brave acts they performed. The exciting stories of these legendary men, the most respected warriors of the Middle Ages, continue to be told today. Oh, I want to hear some knight stories. Oh, look at what they have at the end. They have King... Arthur and his famous knights. King Arthur was the legendary 6th century king who ruled England. His knights were called the Knights of the Round Table because they supposedly met around a circular table showing they were equal. King Arthur insisted his knights be brave, strong, loyal, humble, courteous, and devoted to the church. Here's another knight. Another knight, Sir Gareth. Oh my gosh, even more. Sir Tristram. Sir Lancelot. Here's another one. Okay. Let's read about a different knight, and then I'll show you our last page. Let's read about Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot was the most celebrated knight in all the world. He performed many deeds of great bravery. Okay, I also want to read about this guy before we go to the next page. Sir Tristram, Tristram was a very powerful knight in battle, and even against enormous odds. One of the fiercest battles was against the determined Sir Marhus. They fought for two long hours until Sir Tristram finally triumphed. Think about what the word triumph means. They fought for two hours and then finally he won. Triumph would mean to win. And then the last page, it talks about dragon legends. Okay, so let's look at some of these. St. George was a noble savior who once rescued an entire village from an evil, hungry dragon. Remember, legends are stories that people made up. Okay, what's another story that people made up? Look at this guy's name. Fafner. Fafnir was a fearsome, legendary dragon who guarded a cave filled with gr a great treasure of gold. He was finally defeated by... Siegfried, a famous knight. Okay, let's look at our last one. Oh, Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot was known throughout all the lands as a dragon slayer. He killed dragons in battle that sometimes lasted several days. I would like to look even more and like hear some dragon and knight legends, like stories that people made up. And I'm going to look for some books about kings and queens of the Middle Ages, too. Keep learning, keep asking questions, keep noticing details and finding keywords. That's going to help us be an expert on the books that we're reading.